welcome to Kickatan High School. Tonight, the Warriors from Kickatan will be playing host to the undefeated and number two ranked team in the state of Virginia, the Bethel Bruins. Mike Hauser along with Bent Musgrove as we are sitting here ready to take place as the game is getting ready to start. Let's send it down to the courtside where Brent Musgrove has Bethel head man Craig Breon for an interview. Thanks, Mike. I'm lucky to be standing here with the district leading coach Craig Breon, undefeated 19-0 right now. They're playing the Kickatan Warriors tonight. Coach, uh, that's not too much of a test right here going on as you're coming down the stretch. You're trying to keep your team focused. What do you do now to keep them playing heads up ball like they're playing right now? Well, I think it is a test. Every time you step on the floor, you know, you've got to be motivated and energetic and come with some enthusiasm. And the guys have been practicing really hard. Nothing changes regarding the fact that we're district champs. Hopefully, we can just continue to build on that, work hard each day in practice, challenge each other, and good things happen. I didn't mean that as a test for the players. I'm talking about as far as already wrapping up the district championship. You got that done. Of course, everybody's aware you're going for that undefeated season. Coach, thank you so much for spending a minute with us. I know you're going to get with your players and get ready for these last thank minutes. You, Thanks you. again. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right back to you, Mike. Thanks. All right, Brett. Bethel Bruins uh, wrapped up the district title Tuesday night with their win. And 19-0 and on the season, 15-0 and in the district. Uh, looking to be the second Peninsula District team in a row to go undefeated in regular season play. Let's uh, send it back down to Brent now as he has the head man of the Kickatan Warriors, Kerry Forrest. Thanks again, Mike. I got Coach Forrest here with Kickatan Warriors. I have to tell you, I'm impressed with the dedication this team's got. Very, very young team. Got some real talent. Coach, coming down the last three games of the season, what do you see tonight? Well, when you're playing Bethel, you know you're playing one of the best teams, if not the best team in the state. So where you try to contain them, I don't know exactly. I think the, the main thing we can try to do is hopefully stall the ball some and keep it out of their hands because that seems to be the best way to defend them is not let them have the ball because they're just loaded. Well, they're inside, outside, but you have one of the best young big men in the district that I've seen in a while, the six foot Seth Ratliff. Just real quick, tell us what you think of him. I think he's going to be a phenomenal player. He seems to get better as the season's progressed. He's had double figures every game except the first game this season. He's averaging about eight rebounds a game, and he's already starting to get some notice from some, some colleges. Well, he's going to have a test tonight. This will be a good education for you and for him. Coach, thanks again for spending time with us. Mike, I'll send it right back to you, buddy. Thanks. Yes, uh, again, the Kickatan Warriors. We saw them last uh, couple of weeks ago against the Crabbers over at Hampton. And I'll tell you what, uh, the Kickatan Warriors have a player in sophomore six foot six, Ricardo Radcliffe. The night before they played Hampton, they tangled against the Minchville Monarchs and upset them. And as he scored 35 points in that game, they came back and scored double figures. I believe he ended up with 19 against the Crabbers in a losing cause for the Warriors, but he still. A great individual, uh, young talent in this district that is coming along pretty good. As my co-partner Brent is trying to work his way into uh, the booth here with me. As Brent comes in here, we're gonna. Wait, well, that's you can't can't go with that one. I'm going to have to write it down for you. Okay. Welcome back, Brent. Thank you, sir. I'll tell you what, uh, both of those coaches are, are, are at the opposite ends of the spectrum, but you know what? They both have a real great attitude. Breon's worked very hard for 12 years being coach, and he's, he's got an awesome team. As, as Coach Forrest said, uh, this could be the number one team in the state. Well, let's sit and listen to the national anthem. No, we'll stand.
lady that did it for us during the girls' I'll game. I'll tell you what, she stops the house. Very good. I had to move the microphone because the Renee hear. was standing in front of it, and she was blocking it off, and it was um, humming. getting a humming noise. It was humming. It was humming. All right. Undefeated in number two ranked team in the state, the Bethel Bruins, in the house here at Kickapan to play the Warriors. 19 and 0 in the season, and 14 and 4, or 4 and 14 is the Kickapan Warriors as they get ready to give the starting lineup. Here there comes the, are officials the officials. First. The referee is Barry Lehman. Umpires are Jerry Sprouse and Raymond Payne. Those are our referees for tonight. As Andy will get them up there so people can read it. Great job by our well, crew again tonight. Uh, first, let's uh, go back and reflect just for a second. We weren't expecting a real great game in the uh, first game, and I was very proud that both teams played well, and kick tan hung in there for a long time. Got tired at the end, I think, is what we're going to attribute it to. Uh, yeah, just they, got they, they just got war slam out. That's yeah. all there is to but it. They, I mean, they had there. players that were gasping for air, and that's what happens when you, you don't have the numbers. Now some of the starting lineups. Now is uh, we can get Andy to put them up there for us. We can... Give them to you over the lineup. Here we go for the Bethel Bruins, of course. We've got Adrian Webb to guard, very unselfish. Terry Thomas, quite a shooter as a guard. He's also a senior. Uh, Ivan Harris is a forward, a senior. Of course, then we get to the big boys, Duke Cruz, uh, forward, senior, and James McLean, center. You're talking about 6'7", six, 6'8", six, right they there. They call them the towers. Unbelievable. Because they, uh, they definitely take charge underneath the basket. Now the kick can Warriors, as we get Andy to show that well. Get to uh, call him out. There's Ratliff coming out now. He is he is the surprise of the district right now. As the last uh, half of the season, he really has come come on strong. Ryan Suedo. And that is their playmaker, Keith McBride. Here's the starters as everybody can see him. Jamal Winston, a guard. He's a junior. Terrence Palmer, guard, senior. Ricardo Radcliffe, he's the center, he's sophomore. And Ryan Schwedo, he is a junior forward. Keith McBride, he's the quarterback of the team. He is their guard. He is also a senior. Well, I'm expecting a good game. What you have here is Bethel, of course, undefeated in a district. Number two in the state. Uh, a talent unbelievable. It's oh, just what a great team. And, and if, you, if you have not had a chance to see the Bethel Bruins play this year, which... You know, uh, shame on you because That's you're right. in for you're in for a show. As a These guys can run. They can run. They can play above the rim. They got shooters. They've got everything it takes. This is a team that a coach dreams for once every uh, in, a, in a lifetime to put together at one time on the court. You get pieces every now and then. Two, uh, you, three. You've got uh, a couple of seniors on this team, and and the two the two big guys, and that's. Cruz and McLean. Cruz and McLean, and they're both Division One college recruits. They're both going to Division College, uh, Division One colleges. There's um, McLean's Cruz. going to Tucson, and Cruz is going to Tennessee. Move the ball around. Kikatan is out pressing. They got they're coming out on Thomas. There's Webb on the drive and a push out. Oh, and he gets a walk. Uh, I got to tell you what, Winston for the Kikatan was lucky he didn't get a blocking foul that time with the walk. The walk took place early and turnover by the Bruins. Their first no score early here at Kickatan High School. Kickatan Warriors have struggled a bit during the season, but uh, have come on here lately. Uh, had a couple of had a couple of nice wins. Had a nice win over over uh, Mitchfield. Upset them as Radcliffe, uh, like I said earlier, scored. I think it was 35 points. 30 against in that them. one game. Yeah, they came up. Played Hampton two days later and scored 17 against the Crabbers. Uh, well, that was, uh, you know, the Crabbers shut Radcliffe down in the third and the fourth quarter was a turning factor in that game. In that because, game, it was a good game. That game, was, that game was nick and tuck, too, up until uh, uh, Hampton decided to move their, their uh, defense on there and, and change things around. Well, what you're seeing here is is uh, they're looking for the open player. Kickatan is going to a slow down type game tonight. This they're going to try, going to try to play patiently, and uh, and go for the good shot. They're going to try to keep this a low scoring game, and that way keep themselves in it, because they know, like you said a few minutes ago, if Bethel gets out and runs, there's McBride on the drive. Basket's a little hard. That's uh, 
Nice job by Suedo to get the rebound. Kept that ball alive. He did a great job. Back to McBride again. Double teaming now. He gets free, cuts across the middle. McBride goes up. Oh, did you see how high he went up? And here goes number 20, Terry Thomas. And what a job. He just carried it right to the hole, folks. That's a highlight, Phil. His horse caught right to say you don't miss much in this range. <laughs> <laughs> Two to nothing, Bethel now. now kick it there's there's a shot come underneath to Suedo, and there's a great up. block. Suedo gets his own rebound, and there's ricocheted off to number 23, Harris. And up, there we go. Duke Cruz carrying it to the top. That's Here Jamal McLean on that one. That was all athletic ability right there. Four to nothing now, Bethel. And this is just what and this Coach is what Forrest we're talking did not about. want. But this is what Coach Forrest did not want. Absolutely. You don't want these guys to run on you because if you do, you're in trouble. Well, that that should have been, been a, a block, and it wasn't. Should have been a foul. That's going to be awful on a kick at player. Great call by the referee. But he missed two in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> that ball went off of Palmer out of bounds. Bethel ball here at midcourt right in front of us. Gary Sprouse, the referee, hands the ball off to Winston, who throws the ball in. Winston out. Of course, Webb, is the, he's the general for this team. He gets everything going. Very unselfish. Distributes the ball all around. All Three-point shot. A little bit long. Rebounded by Schwedo. Gets the ball out to Palmer. Here comes the double team. Is that the, the speed of the Bruins? Really control the game when they get out on double team of players. There he is again. Great job underneath the, the number Radcliffe. 20. Great job. Radcliffe gets his first point. Four to two Bethel. That's the up and coming big man in the district. Yep. He's just a sophomore at 6'6. Six, six. Nice tie up there by number 23, Keith McBride, as he ties up Adrian Webb Kick right at midcourt. Four to two, 4.58 to go here. First quarter of play, just getting started. Kikitan's come in with another ball handler, I think. It's like that's, uh, is that number 10? Yeah, number 10. Well, I don't have number 10 on my roster. So we're gonna have to find out who 10 is. Yeah, I don't even have him down there. Well, only three seconds here in a minute. Nice little oh, jump hook. Oh, great job. Little jump hook. That's Radcliffe again, so Mr. he's got him back in the game. This same guy we talked about. Mr. Cruz, meet Mr. Radcliffe. Because he just took it right over top of it. Is McLean going into the hole? And I don't know. Did he uh, get a charge on that one, or did he get a block? That was Cruz that took it in there, wasn't it? Was yeah. it Cruz? I'm sorry. 32, correct. Foul is on number 45 of Kikatan. That's Antoine Dickerson. His first foul of the game. Team's first. 4-4 all knotted up here with 4.30 to go in the first quarter play. Yeah, 10 must be a player that came up from JV. We'll have to get somebody to try to find out who he is, because right now we don't know. Great play. I believe the, uh, I got blocked out with all the people I think it was number by. five. I think it was a point. Adrian Rev picks up his first basket. 6-4, kick a 10. I'm sorry, Bethel. Oh, that's a backcourt, and he got him. Turnover, Kikitan. First turnover of the game for Kikitan. So far, they've kept the ball pretty well. They've done well for their first four minutes of the game. One turnover. Six to four, Bethel out front. Two co contradicting uh, ideas here. Bethel wants to get that ball moving, hit the outside high-low. And Kikatan wants to pack it down in that zone as long as they can contest the outside shot on Thomas. You watch Thomas. every time 20 gets the ball, they're going to be running his face. Thomas for a three wide open That's a little two. bit too hard. Look who went up there and batted Radcliffe the ball away. Radcliffe batted the ball away, and unfortunately the ball went out of bounds. Well, I thought we, Radcliffe kicked it out of bounds. It looked that way, but and they Kikitan got the ball. got the ball, didn't they? Yep. Ooh, that's a close one. That's a backcourt, and Almost. it didn't get what called. a great save. There's Radcliffe on and a great just, job he, underneath. He's just having lunch right there. The sophomores carrying it to the big boys. 6-6 six, six score. All knotted up. 3.30 to go. First period of play. Here at Kikatan High School on a warm, muggy evening. 74 degrees on February the 3rd, 2006. Are we in, are we in Florida now or what? Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, just missed him a little bit. Ooh, that could... Out of well, he, I guess he threw the ball out of bounds, but I think he, he very well in. could have had a, a technical Well, he didn't on. hold long. He just kind of steadied himself and got out well, quick. That's something that they've stopped calling as much now, yeah, too. Yeah, used to call it all the time. Drive 
to the hole. That ain't oh, going. That should have been goal Almost goaltending. goaltending right there. Almost goaltending. And I guarantee you the Kickatan Warriors want to goaltending on that one. There's Radcliffe again off the edge of the rim. McLean with the rebound. Down oh, court to Cruz. Back to Thomas. Back to Cruz. Wait, McLean coming down on Cruz. Going to take it from the corner. And, and he's fouled. fouled. Looks like he's fouled by Dickerson. If that's the case, that's number two on him. Why do you block a 6'8 shooter shooting from 15 feet? Why do you even contest the shot? Boom. Dickerson picks up his second, team second. Still tied up as Duke Cruz will now go to the line. He'll be shooting two. Is this the first free throws of the game? First free throws of the game. And he hits it. Nice. So hey, here's that foul. He's out. He's, he's 10 feet. All down the arm. Nice call, Mr. Official. Nicely done. Of course, when our, everybody's up, nobody's up there but them two. I guess it's easy to see. Coming into the game now for Kickatan is Chad Cunningham. He takes the place of Keith McBride. McBride sits for a minute, get his breath after running up and down the court for five solid minutes. Second free throw. It's good. Net. Tennessee says thank you. That's what I want. Send him on down here. Two points now for Cruz, both on free throws. Full court press on. That's a foul that's going to go against Cruz. What's yep. he doing out there? Hey, yep. Why is he out there trying to block a guy with his hands? That's half his size going down the court. I mean, you know. Just first team foul on the Kick Bruins. Kickatan's showing some quickness now. And they're, and they're spreading the floor. They're very patient. Let's we'll see how it works. They're trying to take some time off of that clock. There's a big man. There's Radcliffe on a jumper at the top of the key. A little There's bit short. McLean. McLean. That's a foul and a He's drive on, to the hole Radcliffe. by number 34, Bill Weaver. He'll be going to the line. He'll be shooting two after the foul. What do you call Fouls that? Fouls against the Warriors. 20. Number I thought it was a Radcliffe, yeah. Radcliffe's first team's third. And he's hanging in. What's he got? Four or six points already. Six. Six points. Taking the right two to big boys. The Weaver at the line be shooting two. First one is. Good. Rattles in. Here you go. See it again. He's taking it from the side. You see you see uh, McLean's, or is that Cruz setting up the, uh, the seal? Wow. That looks, uh, well, he got him on the arm too. Yep. These young men are getting up high these days. Mike. Uh, we just got through doing the girls game, and I'll tell you what, there's, there's what a difference. Yeah, Suedo just knocked the ball outside right back into a brewing hand, so. And then right back to the general web. Oh, good throw. Broken up by 23. Good eyes, boy. Didn't see but a little wonder there to throw that ball underneath. That's Ivan Harris who, no, I'm sorry, Keith McBride back in the lineup. Knocks that ball out. Pass underneath the cruise oh, and taken right, right out him. of his hand. Oh, should have been a foul right there. And he's backing himself right into a hole where he got a couple of guys. Swayed blocked. Up, blocked by McLean, Cruz. By Cruz. Yeah, Cruz just got a piece of that. Yes, and sir. he turned right around and number 33, Covington comes right down to court and takes the ball right out of the Bruins' ball, 34. hand. He gets, the, he gets the pass. Um, talking about Weaver gets the pass and brings it down to waist high to where the defender can get a piece of it. It stays in Kickatan's hands. Uh, Outside uh, shot by Thomas. Bethel's oh, hand. and I tell you what, there's one Dude the Cruz just took it home. On the rebound, just went up, brought it back down to where it was supposed to be. Stolen ball, nice play. I don't know if it's going to be back court or not. Oh, should have been a foul. Yep. Foul on Webb, the uh, point, point guard. That's his first. Taking it out of bounds. Should be the team's second. Hey, well, that was a great play for him to go after that ball like he did and try yep. to get the ball spun around and turn right yeah. around and knock right down the ground. Uh, Palmer just throws the ball right away and then turns right around and Bethel gives it back to him. It's Cruz out there hustling. I got to give him credit. Those 11 are... to 6. Bethel out in front of the Warriors. A minute 23 to go here in the opening period of play. He stepped through before he dribbled. He stepped through yeah, before he dribbled. Yeah, but I'd like to see if I thought he kept his uh, pivot foot down. 
Referee didn't, so he blew the call, or he made the call. He didn't blow it. Uh, he made the call, but it he made like the he call. Step through first. But anyway, oh, almost a steal. It's gone. Here we go. Straight to the hole. And it's a foul on Thomas. Twenty-three that's, going that's to the line. That's two quick fouls on Thomas, isn't it? I think so. And unnecessary. Let him make the shot. It's early in the game. Well, they say it's only his first. I thought he had a foul called a minute ago on him. I thought so, too. Maybe that was a turnover. Wasn't that a foul on that play that was over there on the uh, reach-in? I thought it was him. Okay, anyway, 11 to 6, a minute 10 to go here in the first period of play. At the line, shooting two for the Warriors is Keith McBride. It's not the high-scoring game that Bethel wanted, and it's not quite as low as Kikatan wanted. So somewhere in the middle, two of them working. Right off the back of the rim. Miss free throws won't help you cause any. Right, Thomas is going out and taking a breather. And that is Paul Meredith coming in. He's done a good, he's done a good fill in role for Bethel this year. He's coming and played some key parts. Uh, positions, just a ball possession. He's a real hustler. It's two Second going. one is also off the back of the rim. Oh. And there's, who's that, 45? 45, yeah. That's Dickerson with his rebound and first basket of the game, 11 to 8. Now he's 6'4", so he's no small young man either. That's 24. That's Jamal Lee for three. Yep. Here we go. Be careful. James Lee for three, not Jamal. I was looking at the other name. Timeout, Kikitan. 30-second timeout by the Warriors. That's the first three that uh, Bethel's hit. And let me tell you, folks, if you haven't seen them, they have the capability not on playing inside, but they can light that three-point board up too. Especially uh, Mr. Thomas. Thomas, and, Thomas can throw the ball yes, up. Yes, sir. 49 seconds. Here's a Here's replay. That last, yeah, watch this. Kick it out. I mean, that's the way the game's played. And that's normally what the Bruins will do. Yep. If you're going to pack it back. If the defense packs it in, they're going to pull it out, and, then, and that usually is the case right there. Yep. 49 seconds to go here in the first period of play. The Bethel Bruins out in front, 14 to 8. There's a pitch, There's a, a view of uh, Susan up there. Wave. Say hello. Did she, did she wave to you? No, she did wave. Got a nice smile going tonight, Susan, if nobody's told you. Don't show the other guy. His smile only worked once a week, and we saw it last game. <laughs> See? There okay. it is. See, smile's smile not now. working. It only works once a week, and he's wasted it already. <laughs> oh, There's that double team again. And tie up. Got a tie up. Got him up. It trapped right here at the half court. Uh, Evans for the Bruins did a good job getting in there and tying that one up. But the possession arrow still favors the Warriors, so they'll keep the ball. Still don't know who number 10 is, and we apologize for that. We'll try to find out. There's that double team that just. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice play. I'll tell you what, where we're standing at, we thought that ball had been thrown out. Little jump hook, that's twice. He's put that right in their face. Radcliffe picks up point number eight. He has eight of the ten points now. And look at the surprise ten here. Ten seconds to go. Duke Cruz. Oh, oh. in and out. Five look seconds to go. Try to get a shot off before the end of the quarter, and there it goes. And oh, back. great rebound. Calling it good. Who got it? I, I think. I was blocked out. I did not see it. who got it. I think it was 34, but I'm not sure. If we can get a replay to pick up that last basket. Either way. The Kickatan Warriors are staying here, they're staying in it. They're down by two, 14 to 12. Here, Here's the replay. Let's see if we can pick it up who actually gets the rebound. I think it's 45. Yep, 45. Carrying it right back up to the hole. Good so shot. We'll give Antoine Dickerson. Yeah, we got him. The points. That's four points for him in the first half. And Radcliffe for the Kegatan Warriors has eight. Can't say enough already. He has taken that ball up in the face of the big men. Got a cute little yeah, a baby jump hook. He's just taking it right over the top of the big guys. And, I mean, he's, he's clean with it. Right now in the first quarter play, the Bethel Bruins are three of four from the free throw line. Kegatan 0 of two. Two-point game. Bethel will have the ball to start the second quarter. And got they a have over here. Thomas is back in the game, a little rested. Throwing the ball in is Adrian Webb, number five, to Thomas. He'll give the ball back to Webb to operate around, and we're definitely having a hard time seeing the game at this point. Kickatant's coming out and challenging a little bit, I'm telling you. 
lane underneath. Back out to There's Terry Thomas. Thomas for a three. Oh, it's off the he glass. got it the hard way, but it goes in. That's five points for Thomas in the first uh, first half. You cannot let him get hot. Radcliffe stuck in a, a three-way there, and we I can't see nothing. Okay, it got turned over. Nice pass made Number by 34. 34. That's Weaver on the shot. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Trying to work with the fans here. Ways forcing one up. There's McLean with the rebound. Webb got good follow up by McLean. Just plucked it. Non-stop action now, yes, folks. Sir. That number 34 to 34 hit down. That's again. Weaver. Two yes, baskets sir. in a row now for him. Bethel As has got him running. Bru Bruins have extended their lead now to from two points to, to nine. nine points. It doesn't take long for the Bruins to get going. Their oh. pressure defense, and there's another one. Right straight to the hole as well. Webb. He just carries it in there. That pressure defense is working. Now right. it's 11 points, 23 to 12. That's it. Good thinking, Coach. Get that timeout. Get them settled down. Can't save them, so you might as well use them. Talk it over. That's right. 6.25 to go in the second period. Bethel has. Yeah, this is a good point here. Watch this replay and just to see if any music should be played for this uh, ball handling here. All right, picks it up there. One, two, three. Yeah. Last night, there should be some uh, tango music or something going on there. <laughs> you take three full steps? And a half. And a half? Yeah. But they're short steps. He's the smallest guy on the team. Those look like pretty long well, steps to me. Well, he's the smallest me. guy on the team. So uh, yeah, but gets, his, his, small, his smallest step is... For me, is, <laughs> yeah. For me, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? 23 to 12, 11 point now lead for the Bethel Bruins out in front. 6.25 to go in the second period. Key 10 ball, inbound and ball. Got to get across half court. W10 over here. And another, and there's another, take, another Eric another Rowe turnover. Webb, there's Webb just takes it right to, to the, the basket. Bucket. That is three straight baskets for Webb. Oh, tried to feed low. It's hard to do with the big man. Good idea, though. Yeah, well, you got to give Radcliffe credit. The young man is staying <laughs> underneath that board with those two towers yeah, on there. He, he is uh, he impressed is a, me already. He's a sophomore playing against a couple of seniors on there. He's holding his own. There he goes trapping again. He gets out of it, but he has to keep throwing the ball around. Foul, was it a trip or what? I mean, because everything happened so much lower than those six eight guys, I couldn't see it. Well, I can't see anyhow because I got these people standing in front of me. Foul was on here, number here 20, Watch Terry here. Thomas. That's his second. By our course. All right, now here's the place. All right, there's the foul. I'm right, right across there. the yep. arms. Good yep. call. That was by Terry, yeah, reaching in. So shooting two at the line is Keith McBride. He is 0 for 3 at the line so far. It's his third straight miss. He's got to get these. All right. are, you got to put board, you know, points on the board when the clock's not running. Yeah, two minutes going in the second quarter, and that's the first point they put up. It was 14-12 at, at the end of the quarter. So you see how the effect of the press is taken. I got to get the kick of hands looking good, though. They're coming out to the ball. Was, oh, my heavens. Great job. Oh, and it goes the off shot. the front of the and rim. Ratcliffe clears the boards. McBride to the hole. Blocked by yep. McLean and the rebound. <laughs> Webb underneath to the outside corner, a three-pointer, and it is in and out. Followed up by McLean. Just just cleans up the good stuff coming off the rim. They don't hit him from the deep side. They got two guys underneath of there that can take care of getting the rebound and the put back. That's going to be 10 seconds here in a second. Nice. A little bit off balance. Oh. We took that shot. Nice play by number yep. 33. Covington. Well, what happened when he had the ball started up court and the clean cut right in between him and the ball and the kick of team was able to get the ball. Duke Cruz takes the ball to the hole and it is fouled, I believe, by Ratcliffe. Let's see who gets the call. That's his second, I believe. Yep. 
Radcliffe picks up foul number two. 438 can, to go in the second quarter. They can ill afford to lose the big man underneath that yeah. basket. I'll tell you that now. So Cruz goes to the line. He's going to shoot two. Two for two so far at the line. And mm. didn't get the bounce that time. Here we go. Watch it again. You'll watch him take it to the hole. Well, I'll tell you, it hasn't been too many times this year when Cruz has carried the ball up on the glass that somebody's been up there with him. That one, too. Schwedo in there for the rebound. Good job. Gets the ball out to Paul. That man gets up real strong, uh, Schwedo. He, uh, yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, come that's going to be a... That's a foul on Thomas, Thomas, and that's going to be Thomas's third foul. And who's he calling? Who's called against? Okay. Yeah, he just pushed off. He just If you see that again, he just tried to roll him over. That's unusual for Thomas to get no, in foul trouble this right. early. Brown. I'm surprised Coach Brion's not taking him out yet, but he's got a lot of power in that bench. I can tell you that right now. Uh, Webb was a little bit late. He was mad at himself for doing oh balls out of bounds. Turnover by the Warriors. And you see Kikatan's gotten out of that control thing, and it's because of that press that Bethel's put on. Their big men are coming up to the foul line now, Bethel's are, and forcing that pressure up top. The guards, of course, are playing as soon as they cross the half court line. 412. And some, yeah. Sometimes even before. 412 to go on a run clock now. 27 to 15. Bethel out in front. Undefeated ranked number two in the state. 19-0, the uh, Peninsula District champions as they took the crown after Tuesday night's win. Nice save by Cruz underneath the basket. Gets it outside before that three-point, or uh, three-second uh, call was made. But what a feed to McLean, and what a throw down. Yes, sir. Get it on the baseline to Cruz, and McLean breaks to the bucket. Two, six, eight guys are just playing among the stars, buddy. That's uh, six points now for McLean, and... They're not taking care of their passes. No. They're, they're not even. They're not even looking off the player. No, they're not crisp. You can't lob that ball with the quickness of these guys. I'm telling you. He didn't kick that. It was thrown at his feet. But that's okay. Maybe he did. He I just to move up closer because I can't see yeah. nothing. Yeah. Just let you know, Scott, if you take any pictures now, it's going to be of my left ear. Yep, you're not going to see nothing because <laughs> we're all the way up close to the thing. Three pointer that's from a McClellan. three, but I'm not sure who picked it. Who I got think it, it was it right is. here, 33. 33, that's uh, Covington. That's his fifth point of the game. Down to 12 point game. Oh, little reach in. 33, it's on 33. Same man who just hit it. Back across the arm. First foul on Covington. Chad Covington. Yes, it yes. was. Yes, it was. I see that. I, what they got well, up, I would think. put a two then because yeah. that's all they gave him credit for. We couldn't really see his feet at corners. Uh, both of these corners, it's like being around uh, being around the corner. You just can't see there because of the way the stands that's are set like up. That's what I saw him. Yeah. So could, oh, he threw that one right into Covington's hand. Nice protection of the ball. And look who went up there and got it. And look who's carrying it. Covington. Oh, highlight film, folks. Highlight <laughs> there film. It is. A clean off the board to Cruz for the dunk. Yes, sir. 31 17. People are getting their money's worth in this game. Oh, there's another one broken up. Oh, shut it. Nice move. Oh, he got fouled when he took the shot. McBride back outside. Great job by Suedo to keep the ball alive. And here goes the Bruins running. And oh, pass. Just letting a little too much. Webb threw the ball away. Turnover Bruins. That's number four on the Bruins on the night. Kinkatan has five. Suedo's going out of the game. He's, yeah, Suedo's done a good job on the board yes, tonight. 2.08 to go here in the second quarter. Playing strong. All right, timeout. Looks like the Bruins take a full timeout here. 2.08 to go. 31 to 17 with 14 the Bruins points. out front. 
King of Ten is hanging in there. Yes, they are. Uh, they need to work on their passing. They're, well, not, they're not very crisp passing. It's causing turnovers because a lot of that has to do with that defensive pressure that the Bruins are putting on. They're bringing it up. And Coach Farsi said earlier in the year he's real short on a point Smile guards. He's real short on point guards, folks. And so uh, he's you know, just having to work the ball across as best he can. And, of course, he doesn't want to try to run with Bethel. And it, every time they've broken that press, they've tried to they tried to pick up. Here's the Sally. Bunch. This is beautiful. This, this, uh, off the board. That's, that that is a set play from McLean to to uh, Cruz. And they they trade back and forth. I mean, if, yeah. If he knows his um his twin tower is right there with him, he's going to feed it to him. Neither one of myself is. No, he could have very easily gone to the hole and put that one in himself. And he he did a good job yep. feeding that off the backboard. Now, does he get a rebound and? A, a shot on that play tonight only tonight only yes yeah, because we're only doing this game tonight so tonight <laughs> we can get the rebound. i would think so it's off the board i mean i, I would guess so but i look like you a pass to, to yeah me. if that's the case you have to charge the other one with a, with a uh, shot you would have to yeah that's true look at this pressure defense good job on radcliffe to get out there yeah. to get to the ball and he, and he needs to get rid of the ball Kid six foot six can dribble the ball. He's going to make a great guard. Sophomore. I'll tell you, when he gets to college, he handled the ball, handles the ball very well. Oh. Almost threw that ball away. And one thing about the Bruins, every time Kikitan goes to take a shot, there's a Bruin guy in his face. Goes over the back. Yeah, over the back on number 32 for the Warriors, and that's uh, McKeachin, and that's going to be his first foul. That was real obvious. But he was up there fighting. you got to give him credit. He was scrambling I'm every looking minute. at Jerry Sprouse, and he's standing right there looking at it and saying, no, you shouldn't have done that. should not have done that one. Minute and 30 to go, 31 to 17. Bethel out in front with the ball. Taking their time now to set this Whoa. up. And he makes it. That was McLean. Playing it off the glass. Was that a was that a pass from Cruz? Yes, right mm -hmm. back to him. So McLean gets to put in for his eighth point and will go to the line to shoot for the natural three. Watch this nice sweet touch. Boom! Get hit right there before the actually, shot. Actually, the, the, he should be shooting one. Misses that one. Rebounded by McBride. Yeah, they just put this 33 something. McBride with the ball. Out here to number, number 10. 10. I'm sorry, we don't know who it is. McLean on the rebound. Takes the ball down to the court. Dishes the ball off to it's number 30, 34 30. Weaver for his sixth, seventh point as he just lays it in going down the line. It's amazing how these how smooth these guys are. Only five seconds here. Got to get rid of the ball now. He's stuck in the corner. He gets it out nicely. Nice pass under to McLean to a wide open. Radcliffe. Wide open. I'm sorry, uh, Radcliffe, correct. That's 10 points now for Radcliffe. He's got 10 of the 19 points for Kickatan. 30 seconds to go. Mm. Travel call against who? Is that McLean? Yeah. A little, little surprise. 35 to 19, 32 seconds to go in the first half of play. Been a quick first half. Yes, it has. Well, and if you look, uh, oh, there it is. Uh, this one's going to be uh, all she wrote. She'll put that down. Yeah. Duke Cruz on a little spin move there in uh, Roundhouse. Don't and the the uh, Michael Jordan windmill, is that what that is? Pass forced out of bounds. Coming in the game now for Kickatan is Covington. He takes the place of number 10, who we got to find out who he is. It was 14 to 12 at the end of the quarter. Now 37-19. Eight yep. seconds left. You got to get going to get this shot off. Nice, nice play touch. by number 12, Palmer. That's his first basket. And that does it at the end of the first, first. half of play. What a game. Bethel 37, Kickatan 21. Stay You're tuned. It? You're seeing it all, folks. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned for second half action here at, at Kickatan. Be back shortly for halftime stats and second half.
second half action here between the Hampton Lady Crappers and the Lady Warriors of Chicken Band. Mike Howes along with Britt Musgrove. 56 to 14 has the third period of play is now underway. Lady Crabbers working the ball around. We'll give you first half statistics here in just a couple of minutes. Right over oh, the top Oh, nice again. play, but unfortunately she, she didn't quite get the uh, handle on the ball. Turnover the by the Crabbers. But I mean, it was a great look by the, by the little general on the floor, 20. Um, took it right over the top. 56 to 14 at the half. Well, you're talking Lady about Crabbers. Talking about the Hampton Crabbers, Coach David Six been coaching 17 years, been here at Hampton. They've been, what, in first place the last seven years here, I think, yep. haven't they? So that's quite a, establishing a program that's uh, got its own reputation. They go. What you paying attention Not to? real sure who the foul's called against. We'll have to wait and see how they put it up on the board. That's Tiffany Davis's fourth foul that quick. Well, I don't think it's going to hurt him. Uh, the only thing he's got to worry about is enough players to end the game right now, not particularly who. So shooting is number five, Elizabeth Osborne, as she makes her first one. Going for the second one. You know, just to take a little time away, if you look up in the stands up there, I don't know if the camera crew can pick them up, but we got the uh, Lindsay Lyons sitting up oh, there on the other side. nice shot. Tiffany Davis on with uh, the reporter. Like I said, the Lindsay Lions are coached by uh, uh, Coach Callaway from over there, and all these girls will be coming to Hampton uh, from Lindsay. And right now they're 3-0 oh in their uh, intramural, not intramural, but they play like a uh, rec league in junior high school now. So they'll play 10 games at 3-0 oh right now, and it's nice to have them out here. They wanted to see a varsity game, so the coach brought them over tonight to see this. And, Good, very good. Got to talk to her a, for little just a, bit of, a little bit of halftime shooting stat for for the team. There's another turnover by the Warriors, who, by the way, had 25 turnovers in the first half. Leading the way scoring in the first half for the Lady Crabbers was Alicia Bennett with 14. Three point followed, attempt. Followed by 12 each from LaDonna Pierce and Tiffany Davis. And four each. that throw? Tamara Davis and Kelly London had four, and with 10 was Evelyn Lewis. Let's see, Pierce. There's a, there are the Lindsay girls right there. Thanks for being here, Coach Callaway. I hope they enjoy it uh, and see what they're looking forward to. All those girls are going to Hampton in a couple of years, 12 and 13 year olds now. 59 to 16 is the score. And Stale. I did not see who got the bat. Oh, yeah, I did. Yes, you I'm did. Sorry. <laughs> that was Tiffany Davis on that three pointer. Another steal by the Travers. That's a three-point shot by number three, Tamara Davis. Tamara Davis. And that was all net. So. And, of course, that was Bennett, the six-foot-one girl that brought that ball down court with a low dribble and made the pass. Leading scores in the first half for the Warriors, num uh, number 55. It'll be five seconds here. For, no, she's Henderson ended up with five points. There were three points for five Moore. Five-second call. Osborne had three. Applin had two, and scoring one point was Renee Fowler. And that was another turnover by Kikatan, five-second five violation. 62 to 15 is the score. There's Bennett on a nice, nice turnaround. jump shot. A little baseline jumper from about seven feet. How do you stop that? Six foot one, six foot mm. Tough game. And she dribbles the ball uh, very well. Yep. She's going to be a point guard for somebody in college. This keeps up the way she handles the ball. That's Henderson with the ball. She likes it left-handed dribble. Good pass underneath. Whoops. Oh, what a block. What a block. Bending on a block, and there she goes, taking the ball down to court. Behind her back. Donna Pierce for a three-pointer. Three it's off the back of the rim. Rebounded underneath by number 14, Cami Roxbury. They got, Hen they got Henderson out bringing the ball up now. She handles Roxbury the ball well. gets the start here in the second half of play. Oh, nice pass. Yep. Got the turnover, though, as uh, the Hampton Lady Crabbers. Oh, they're going to charge, charge an offensive foul. Yeah, on. She, she did kind of jump into her. She did kind of jump into it. That's going against number four, Tiffany Davis. Goodbye. That's her fifth That's foul. That's five fouls for Tiffany Davis, and now the Crabbers are down to six players. Six players. I don't know how they're going to handle the pressure. Well, she was the only one that really has any any problems foul. She ends up leaving. But she had about 12 points, three points. 
15. She ends the night with 15 points. Fouls out early here, midway through the third period. Almost play. another steal. Ham's getting Ham's playing the lanes now. There's Bennett out there as the looks like the pressure has eased up a bit. And now they'll just play standard defense and try to uh, force them into making bad passes. That ball was blocked by Bennett, and I believe Bennett's going to get called for a foul. I thought that was a good block by Bennett, but unfortunately she picks up her second of the night. That's going to put uh, number 30, Samantha Applin, at the line. She'll be shooting two. Well, I, it looks like Forsman's got this game. There's a replay of that. Whoa. She jumped into her. A whole lot of ball. But like you say. It had to be a call on the body. Yep. Yeah. Well, a little bit behind her, but saving grace right there. Pass was intended from Lewis to Bennett. A little bit behind her. Look at Bennett battle for the rebound. And they called her for a double dribble <laughs> on that play. And I don't think she ever had a, had possession of the ball to have a have a foul well, or you know a turnover the, called on. There were three double dribbles there. Right. All three players were dribbling. That's right. So it's been three double dribbles. Everybody got a hand on that oh, ball. Yeah, that was very close right there. There's Bennett again, and she's a very active ninth yep. grader on this team. Now, you know, we're talking about kick at the end. This game, of course, looks like it might be over, but Lester Sapp's got a very young team. He had four girls that came in here as transfers. There's another turnover. No foul. Nice shot off the glass by Davis. But he's got uh, a lot of freshmen and sophomores on this. And and he's hoping to turn it around. He turned it around some years ago. He, he had a 30, 40 and 17 record back in the early 90s. And he came back coaching three years ago, trying to rebuild the program. So that's two quick baskets by Tamara Davis. Back hang with back. it, Lester. Just hang there, buddy. You got a, got a good program. You know what you're doing. Just run into a windmill tonight, of course. The Crabbers, top team, one of the top teams in the state every year. Right now, currently, the Crabbers are ranked number nine. I'm sorry, they're ranked number 10 in the state with Woodside after Woodside defeating Hampton early right, right. or they uh, have moved into the number nine spot. So the Crabbers went from number two to number nine after losing and, that game to, to Woodside. And just to let people know, the last regular season game of the year between Hampton is going to be between Hampton and Woodside here at home on the 9th of February. So Hampton is going to be uh, hopefully healthy. I believe that is a and, Thursday night too, by the way. Hopefully healthy and ready for that game because I know that uh, – the Crabbers are thinking very seriously about a little bit of revenge. Another turnover there. Hampton's uh, getting a little bit careless here. Monica Williams for the Crabbers, a five foot ten junior. Well, runs into her own player. Is in the game for the Crabbers. Uh, <laughs> as that only leaves one player that has a London stuff. was kind of standing there when uh, Tamara tried to bring the ball up court, and the biggest obstacle in the way was her own player. So Hampton's just going to settle into this passing game. Kelly London back over to LaDonna Pierce. Back to London. Drive to the hole and nope. pulls up. Good defense. Yep. Zone slides well. There's Taking a pass over the top. underneath to Lewis, and she's hammered as she goes in. That was about a perfect a pass that you could ever yep. have. And the teams are giving up six to seven inches to her every time she gets a ball down below. So not much you can do. Here it is. You see it right over the top. You're going to give this foul to two players. You should see this right here. Boom, one on the left wrist, and the other one on the... Henderson gets the uh, foul, number 55 for the Warriors. That's her first. Evelyn Lewis will be shooting two. This is her first free throw of the game. Make it. Free throw shooting has been pretty good so far tonight. They're eight of nine from the line, the Lady Crabbers. That's the, that can carry you a long way. I don't care where now, you're playing. From what I understand, that's what hurt them in the game against Woodside. Yeah. Yep. So they are nine of ten from the free throw line here in the game, the Lady Crabbers. Yes. We had a breakaway, but unfortunately for the Travers, the Warriors defended that all the way to the basket is Pierce. No good. Rebound put back by Lewis. And she just continues to, to take, take over here in the second half. She's, what's it? What's it? She's playing in a 
air with what's we're not for me. She's above everybody. Gives her 14 points on the game. 72 to 18 is the score. All right, 30. Yes, sir. That's a nice That's Apple. turnaround nice basket turn by Apple. From the foul line. Yeah, nice job. That was Bottom almost Pierce a walk over there. here to. Yep, three. Who's that number five? five. Kelly London. That's yep. her first three pointer. Three point shooting tonight's been pretty good too for the Crabbers. Yep. Well, Kikatan's got to stay back in the zone to just try to guard about the big girls. And that's six three pointers for the Crabbers in this game. Henderson throwing it up. Rebound, Hampton. There London. comes London nice out with the rebound. Nice pass on a four-on-one break, and, and that is actually a good call. Yep. I don't think it should have been a fair. Uh, uh, it probably was more of a double dribble than it was a travel, but either way, the, the, the call was made. Scorekeepers call them over. Let's we'll see what we, what's the confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody back behind us hollered, oh, that's a TV timeout. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I'm not real we sure like exactly what that was here, all about. If you don't know here at Hampton, the crowd is all around you, right behind you. And uh, that guy that I had sitting over here in the Hampton boys game against Bethel so last week was something. Was he he he, uh, he was something else. Yep. Oh, Pierce just put Dribbled number 45 Dickerson down. He goes. He just took oh, it right nice in. drive by Davis Tamara Davis. Davis. Take the steal and tear it all away. Well, I'm afraid that 100 points. 77 to 20. That 100 points may be possible. And it's a foul. And there's a blocking call against, I believe, is it number 14? Well, it's 49.3 seconds to go in the game. 34. And Monica has, Williams, that's, his, that's her first. 77 to 20. That, that equals to, what, 57 points? Mm. Another turnover. I stopped counting on turnovers. Yeah, well. It's just a pressure, and they haven't got a lot of depth. I just don't want to see the girls get down because. Uh, I don't think Lester South's going to let them do that. They realize coming in here, this yeah, was going to be a he talked this about was going to be a difficult situation. He talked about it in the interview. Everybody's young, a lot of young players, and hopefully, hopefully that they'll they can come out of with something positive. And that is, that they, they kept playing. Keep your heart. Don't quit. A three-second uh, call against the Lady Crabbers. Yeah. You know, just 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 keep your, your head up. And just keep coming at it because it's next year, next year, and they've got a lot of young girls here with some good height. Samantha Applin brings the ball in, and she's standing there with the ball underneath her arm, waiting for somebody to help come down and get the ball yep. to. And launched. Oh, oh sir. nice play. As that is Jessica Moore. That's her second three-pointer, I believe. It's the only two baskets she's made. They've both been three. There's another three from the corner and a rebound. Lewis on the rebound. And another three-point attempt. Looking Whoosh. good. Tamara Davis. Yep. That's her That's third, and she has... She has nine points already in the third quarter. As the third quarter is about to end, and it ends as we are finished here with three quarters of play. Lee Crabbers, 80 to 23. The last 40 seconds of that quarter, we had what two three-pointers? Yep. Just to end it. Well. All right. I think I, I think now Coach Six is going to drop them back. I know he doesn't want to get them out of what they do because they're. Well, you can't do so much. You only yeah. have six players. Yeah, but I know what I'm pointing. I know he wants to keep him focused because he, you know, after tonight's game to go against Denby, then they take go right back against Phoebus, then Heritage, Menchville, and Woodside. All those teams are right around the top or tied for the top at Hampton. So he doesn't want to take any pace off of it. You know, talk about our crew. Yeah, we talk about our. We crew. talk about our crew a lot of times, usually yes. off mic. Yeah, though. we can't say a lot of things on camera, but tonight we. <laughs> We do have Scotty Bowers is the, is the man, the producer, and Don Shirouse, of course, is doing audio, and he's the engineer in there. Andy Foley, he's doing all the graphics on camera. Of course, up there we got Susan Bowers up there in the sweat box, along with uh, Nathaniel Braxton up there, where the temperature's about 120. And then Ron Baton, of course, on the floor moving around. Sarah Myers in the truck, and Mike Wait, Nguyen. Guys. There, he, well, yeah, Mike Nguyenski, of course, he's out doing the slow mo and uh, the instant replay, replay, and Renee K Camden. She's the production assistants out there, uh, common Scotty down because of the super things we're doing out here. But that's not me, and I'm not saying who I'm talking about. But uh, thanks, guys. Y'all do a great job keeping her on camera. Hey, Mike, you're doing good in there, boy, in the replay. You're taking over. You're going to be a leader here. Hampton with another inbound and Oh, a foul. nice play. Inbound and foul. Okay. <laughs> Kelly London on the drive and the basket and fouled, so she will go to the line to try for the 
good old fashioned three point play. Watch this. Here you go. You see it come again. Samantha Nice Applin. pass. Nice pass. Foul and still completes the shot. As Mike, as Mike Hauser says, the old fashioned three point play. Applin in, uh, picks up her third foul for the Lady Warriors. Ellie London at the free throw line. And it's good. Well, what's that make him 10 for 11? From the free throw line? Well, he's still out here putting the pressure on. I'm a little surprised. Uh, it's a little token, token pressure. Nothing big right now. And, and we're going to have a foul, foul called. Yeah, it looks like uh, off away from the ball. That's Applin. And that's two quick ones on her. That makes four. A lot of that, she's getting tired, I think. 83 to 23. Seven minutes to go, seven and a half minutes to go in the game. That's Bennett on a three-pointer. Three a little and bit long. Rebound brought down strong. Shows her strength that uh, she can shoot from way outside. Jessica Dickerson, she's just a 10th grader, and she came down strong with that board. like to see that. That's Henderson. It looked like a oh, tie. That's a nice tie-up. Oh. oh, my. That was great defense. Yeah. We had a perfect view of it, yeah. too. And I think the wrong person blew that whistle because it – she had a back between her and the ball, and the other official was looking right at it. So Bennett picks up her third right, foul. You watch this play. When it goes in, you'll see the position of the official. Watch this drive, and, it, and see the back is right at the official. So she couldn't see what yeah, was happening with the ball. She had the top of her hand right on top of the ball. Yep. And it don't matter. The whistle blew. She got the foul. That's it. 83-23, 7 to go on the running clock here. Yeah, Got to be a five-second. Got to be five. And that's another turnover. And there's what? Lester Sapp. He says, you know, I don't mind you dribbling the ball, but you can't stand well, there and dribble the ball but, the whole court. But it's not just her. Nobody was coming out to get the ball. Well, that's, that was the same thing that happened earlier down here at this end of the, of the court when uh, uh, the Lady Warriors were inbounding the ball. The girl was standing there with the ball underneath her hand, arm, waiting for somebody to come down and help. There's another foul. Big girls battling for the ball. That was a nice rebound by Monica Williams, yes. and she's fouled on the rebound. That one goes against number five, but loses the five one. Yeah, she's only a 5'10 crabber in 11th grade. Her second team you know, so for a backup, next year they're going to have 6'3", 6'1", and 5'10", just what we see standing here, all with experience. And then they're going to have a 5'9 guard who's fouled out, just a ninth grader, back with experience. So, uh... All he, all, he, all, all this, this lady Crabber, this lady Crabber team, all Here's they do replay. is just, all they do is just re, reorder, you reload. Know, reload. You reload. That's, we usually find ourselves talking about the Phoebus Phantoms football and the Hampton Crabber football talking about reloading. They don't, you know. They're... Nice rebound on the play by Bennett and a put back in, as she just adds to her total. And it has 18 on the night. We're going to have to think about players of the games here before too long. Nice pass to Henderson. Whoops, she threw the ball in low again. Nice He's not drive. going to hold it up. He's not holding that ball Tamara up. Davis right to the hole. Went right around the defender and took it straight to the bucket. If you're not going to cut her off, she's going to Mary take Davis it straight to the bucket. Davis has 11 points in the third. third fourth uh, in the, well, she's got 11 second points half. just in the second half. Nice yep. hands. Uh, well, you know, we, I went and watched the Bethel game the other night, and uh, Hampton dropped back into a zone pretty much the fourth quarter. So I keep waiting for that, but he got the pressure on. Day, Tamara Davis has 18. Elisa Bennett has 18. Pass at her feet. Elvin Lewis has 14. There's Henderson. Oh, she should have took that spin shot right there. They're getting out on 32. She's hit two three-pointers, so they're coming out. And that was a foul on 34, I believe. On Hampton, I think that was on Monica Williams. Williams. Yeah, that'll yeah. be two fouls on her here yeah. in the fourth quarter. She's getting plenty of play time here in the second half. Of course, they only have six players to draw from. Here it is again. One player has fouled out. And when you start with seven players, your bench is real limited. Yeah. If but it makes, here, it makes it easy for the coach as far as oh figuring yeah. out your rotation. If you don't, if you weren't here early in the game, uh, Tia Walker is out with a toe injury. She did not play. And... You got two other injuries also, I believe. Desiree Walker is out with a knee injury of some type. They haven't determined the type of injury yet. 
so she'll be gone for a little while. That foul is on the Crabbers, number 34, Monica Williams. Well, the good thing about this for the Crabbers, of course, the longest break is coming right after this night's game. they got a six-day break. They don't play Demby until the 27th, so hopefully some of that problem can heal because Demby can play them tough, too. Well, they've got uh, uh, next week is exams, I believe. Yeah. So I say they got six, six game of, break. That was close. It was close to a uh, double or carry or whatever you want to call it. In it with a pass underneath to. Nice little draw up shot. Okay. They're battling for the rebound still. 88 to 25 with 539 to go I, in the fourth period. I play. think these girls may have 100 points on their mind, Mike. Yeah, well, that was a late call. Yeah, a little. That one's going to go against number three. That's Tamara Davis, her second. So far tonight, the Crabbers, Tiffany Davis, uh, fouled out early in the third quarter. Three for Alicia Bennett and two each for Monica Williams, Evelyn Lewis, and now Tamara Davis and Madonna Pierce has won. Well, with five and a half minutes to go, we're getting close to where we're going to have to start looking at players of the games for both of these teams. And again, those are given to us by uh, Tidewater Team Sports, Dave Chubb and uh, Terry McNamara down there. Well, thank you so much. And of course, our buddy Malcolm, who works down there for him, he's gone to Florida for a month. What a great life he has. Hope you see us when you get back, Malcolm. I know they miss you because you were doing all the work. That's a tie water team sport. <laughs> Osborne makes both free throws. 88 to 27. Oh, a three pointer from the corner. Oh, just they only sweet. gave her two. And that is Kelly Osborne. Ke Kelly no, London. I'm sorry. Kelly London, I think that was. London one. gets her. And London has really taken over here in the second half, point wise. A little behind the back action, but eight points by London in the in the second half. By Osborne. Kick the ball, ball the by ball. Bennett. So Lady Warriors will maintain. We got five minutes to go, and the Crabbers already have 90 points. And they're still out there pressing the ball. They're not giving them anything free. They're going to make them work for it. They're going to call it now. Well, it's getting a little ticky-tacky here now, Yeah, folks. it is. They're number five. That's London picking up another foul for the Crabbers. We'll see how many she has. Foul on number five, Kelly Just a little, little ticky-tacky here. London picks up her second foul. That's Osborne at the line again to shoot. Good. Well, I have to tell you, both teams are hitting the free throws, aren't they? Here you go, we watch this again. Let's just see. Drives around. Don't see much pressure. So somebody tell me where that foul was. I, I haven't figured that one out yet. She misses that one right now. Oh, there was a carry and nobody was looking. <laughs> oh, just trying to do too much with the ball. Good shot. Oh, nice play there. Nice shot. Osborne. Like the Osborne. She just took it right up among the trees. Soft touch. 11 points now for Elizabeth Osborne. Another two-point attempt and rebound and another two-point attempt, and it's good. That was, that was by London. She's taken over. Turned her loose. That's 10 points in the second half for London. Good screen. Nice play, unfortunately, a little bit off of the rim. Okay, a little reaching in there. that going to be against 30 on kick of 10. Was That's Applin. Is it 30 or 52? Three. Zero. Zero. 30, okay. Applin, that's five, so she fouled out. I was going to say, out. she's big for them. I'll tell you, she a uh, ball handler. She shot, has hit a couple shots down the middle. Right now, Jessica Moore has eight points. Elizabeth Osborne. As 11, so Osborne, number five for the Warriors, is their leading score. Right now. Right now. And for the Crabbers, they've got five players that are in double figures. Oh, oh that's a little another turnover. Another turnover by London. She got it, it back. turns right around and takes it right out of her hand. Yep. Nice pass in look the bit. What a look, move. I'm telling you, just missed a shot. And oh, that was and Lewis foul. on the rebound, and she's hammered, and I believe it was. Uh, 52, I think. Yeah, flat Fowler, I believe. I Yes. Good eyes. I mean, she took a swing. You watch this foul now. She's getting a little disappointed. Step, nice step out. I'm telling you. That's a pretty pull-up shot. Yes, it too. is. Just missed it. But watch this rebound. That's a six-foot-one. Uh, watch forward. it. See that hammer? Yep. <laughs> you will not shoot this ball. 
Lewis makes the first. 93 to 30 is the score. 401 to go in the last quarter. Makes the second. 94. No, disallowed the bucket. Valene bonus. Now that's that. Now I've got to change my score sheet. <laughs> Don't let the pressure mount now. It's probably going to make a difference for the end of the night. Yeah, we've got to pick player of the games here, and well, out of well unfortunately, <laughs> wait, wait, we're getting close. That was uh, Osborne throwing the ball out of bounds. And Done a pretty good job. What a pass right underneath top. to a wide open Bennett. Who feeds and it out to number five, Kelly London. And she's just tearing the nets That's up in the second 12 half. 12 points in the second half for London alone. <laughs> 95 to 30 is the score. That's and a three-point throw. Rebound. You notice how I said that, yep. a three-point throw. Here's a pass underneath to a streaky Bennett. Oh, she got away oh, with a wall. what a nice shot, though. I have to tell you, she's looking pretty strong, too. She's got 20, but she has been, she's carried just the ball dominated. up the court. She's done uh, she, she played well, and Another there's a turnover. Ball bounces, bounces off, off her foot. Nice feet underneath. But guess who? 22 for Bennett. And it's, oh, and she took an extra step. And as talented as this Hampton team is, they're not selfish. I mean, you just saw in that last break, it's a runaway game, three on one, and the best person in the best position gets the ball. Well, I'm sitting here looking at uh, Lester Sapp over there, and he just, <laughs> I guess the players called timeout and said, we need to take a break. <laughs> because, because Coach Bennett never got off the, off the chair, and the other player turned around to the referee and said, give me a 30 second timeout. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me. Two minutes and 54 seconds left in the fourth quarter, 99 to 30. The Lady Crabbers out in front. I know this may sound strange, but I have to tell you, I'm impressed with the Kikatan girls because they kept their head up. They knew what they were up against. Coach Sapp talked about it before the game. They knew they were game. So I give you a heads up, girls. Good job for hanging in there. I know you're going to be better next year. Don't give up on this. Well, Kikatan has two... Two seniors on the team. That's what I'm saying. Their whole roster got two seniors in it. Hampton's got four, and two of those seniors, who are normally starters, are not playing. So they only have two seniors that are that are actually playing. Over the top. Great pass underneath to, guess who, Bennett. Yep. We need to pick our player of the game, and I, I think it's real obvious who they are. Well, right now, I, I don't see anybody in contention. Hampton just went to 101 points. And a foul gets called now. That called a push on number five. Foul is on number five. Kelly London, that is her third. Okay, 2.37 to go here. Hampton's going over the century mark. Not a whole lot to say. You'll see the foul here. I'm going to show it to you again. Drive from the top. And she called it on five. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Osborne again at the line where she has pretty much lived tonight. And she makes it. This is eight free throws in the second half by Osborne, and she's made seven of them. There's another pass underneath to Bennett, who guess what? A little sweet jump. Does a sweet turnaround. I yep. Tell you what, we all just go ahead and say who the players of the games are. I think it's, why, it's why pretty make, even. Why don't you make your move, Coach? Uh, but the Hampton Crabbers, obviously, just got a, a heck player of a who's screen up top. I'll tell you that. A player who has absolutely dominated this game so far tonight. A freshman, Alicia Bennett. Right now she's got 26 points as she continues to just add on to it. They just tried to get it into her again. And Elizabeth Osborne for the Kitan Warriors will be our player of the game for the Warriors as she has really spent a lot of time at the free throw line in the second half. Well, she's kind of done it all. He's hit seven of nine, or seven of eight. And there is a turnover, a steal by Tamara Davis and a basket, who, by the way, has put up a, a lot of numbers tonight. Yeah, she's uh, kind of taken over here a little bit. She, she has 20 points herself. 
There's a walk Travis. called on the okay. Lady Warriors. And, and Crabbers have two players that have 20 points or more. And they got, what, five in double figures? Five players in double figures. Well, it got to be with uh, only seven players. One's been on the bench since the beginning of the third quarter almost and fouled out of the game. And you got 100 points. No, I'll rephrase that. They have yeah, six. Another, another three by number three. <laughs> Good comment. The no smoking 108 sign. to 32. And the Hampton Crabbers have five players in double figures. And I think this is the third time this year. I'm sorry. Do it again. They have six players. So all, all six players that have played in this game. Another steal. Are in double figures. And uh, the only one that's not is Monica Williams, who came in late in the, in the third quarter. Period. And that was Williams, by the way, on that shot. A little bit long. Lost three bound. Forty five seconds to go in the game. Nice pass. And a good follow, right? Oh, it's good. Number five. Osborne, our player of the game yeah. for the Lady, Lady Warriors. Warriors. Unreal. 108 to 34. And the Crabbers still continue to drive. Yeah. And that was a little bit Guess off. Bent it on the rebound. And slam. Number 52 is in there just uh, wreaking havoc. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly London is hammered as she gets ready to go up for the basket after the rebound. Foul is called on number. Foul is number 52. That's Fowler, her third. That is her third. So that's going to put I think, London here, at the line. Now no, no, watch Fowler here is a, is a well, we're throwing a, showing the uh, free throw attempt. On the line shooting for Hampton, number five, Kelly London. See if we see this replay. Yeah, here it is. Now watch the rebound and watch 52. Now, Bennett, see it? Bennett on the rebound. All right, now watch this. She starts swinging. Whoops. Not yet. London, One more time. One. Now watch this. You come right back at it again with another big swing right across the top. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my ball. You're not going to get it either. 109 to 34 is the score. And I was going to say, I think this is the third time the Crabbers have scored over the century mark this year. Uh, and they've done it tonight with seven players. Just constant pressure. And well, they got six, and they've, they've been really even. And they were even as far as their scores, too. Uh, I mean, six, six out of the seven players scored in double figures. Well, again, now it's Led by our game. player of the game's footy kick hand warriors, number five, Elizabeth Osborne. And, of course, for the Hampton Crabbers was uh, Alicia Bennett, their freshman. All six foot one freshman. She did it all tonight, forward, folks. Forward, center. She can handle the ball. She can do everything. So the final score here at Hampton High School, the Lady Crabbers 109 and the Lady Warriors 34. We'll be back shortly, I guess, to do the boys' game. But we appreciate game. you coming back here. Mike Hauser along with Brent Musgrove. So long, everybody.